Hi guys, Paul Pluter, Paul Pluter channel, and today I'm doing a paid review. This is for, oh, I'll use his first name, it's Eric, 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 and uh, Arch, my name is E, well, okay, name and location not important, I've enjoyed, I have enjoyed your videos for a long time now and have received much enjoyment from your content. I have even had conversation using your Archieisms with other watch collectors face to face in real life. As I do get out of the house. As I do get out of the house, unlike the trolls who fill the comment boxes below. I have submitted a nice donation to you as compensation to review something different for your channel. The attached photos are of a Pacific collection on which I would like to hear your thoughts. All of these pieces are within 10 years of each other from the late 50s, late 60s. They are all in the mid 30 mil range and are also all daily wearers. I believe that jumbo hawking steel watches are for show offs who lack taste and maturity. So here's, there's so much more to horology than size and price alone and I feel this range is overlooked. Included today are four pieces. First, an Omega Ranchero 2996 that has been restored. I know that will offend purists, but I do not care as I like the way it looks now more than ever. That, that More than it ever did before. I got this from another fan of yours a while back for whom you have also done a review, Dan in Seattle. Second is a 1969 Hamilton GGW113 US military issue. I love these and the excellent patina you can find on them if you are lucky to get a good one. They wear perfectly on the weekend or in the bedroom. This example is heavily worn and has had a replacement crown and crystal. It's probably seen combat overseas so who cares? Shit gets damaged when you're actually being used. Third is an early 1960s Amiga manual sub second. I have had this watch for a very long time and have often received compliments on it. Not sure why as it's fairly plain, a plain dial with nothing special going on. It's just starting to turn a soft tropical tone so maybe that's the allure. Fourth and last a relatively rare mid 1960s Benrus. 3061 black dial also known as the Benrus bullet for its appearance on Steve McQueen's wrist in the 1968 film Bullet. This watch has something special for me for a number of reasons and it took a long time to find long time to find one. There are no men on the fucking moons and no Rolexes here, no Royal Oaks and no World Times. I have owned and worn pieces that are worth a great deal more than what is shown here, but again, I believe the essence and meaning of one's watch collection should lie in the intrinsic value of the pieces and the pleasure they give while they are being worn, not for how much one paid. Best E. Thank you so much there. So, what do I think there? Okay, let's have a bit of a discussion here. Firstly, the... Uh, the uh, Amiga Ranchero 2966. What do I think of that? Yes, I quite like it. Very nice hands there. I love the 3, 6, 9 and 12 on the dial. The um, I, I quite say I, 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 I do do like that. Then you've got a 1969 Hamilton. Gee, that's, that'd be like a Vietnam War watch. Yes. Military issue, I understand. That's uh, quite interesting. Then you've got a 1960s Amiga manual sub second. Yes, I quite like that. And then you've got a uh, then you've got the uh, the Benrus Bullet. Bullet. Okay. Well, I suppose you've got to collect things that really mean something to you. I mean, this is the whole thing with collecting things. Um, You've got to find your niche, and uh, the most important thing in any watches you have is that do you like them, and do you do you love to wear them? So if if that uh, if that is the case, Eric, I mean, 
go for it. By all means, go for it. Um, I, I must say, I, I, I do like, I do like the Amiga Ranchero. That is a really, really, really cool, cool piece there at the end. That's a, a very, very nice, very nice, nice piece there. Uh, I don't think it's restored badly. I, I quite like the dial and it, it just it's got a nice patina to it. The, uh, the Hamilton military issue. Uh, Hamilton, you know, these military issue watches, they are very popular. So who am I to say it's not the thing to collect? Um, by all means, uh, very, very interesting, interesting piece indeed there. You know, that's, 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 that's how these things are. So, um, yep. And then you've got the Amigas manual subdial. I, I quite like that. Very plain, elegant sort of piece there the Benris I'm uh, not a huge fan of the Benris but hey who am I to criticize what you like there I think it's a you know these are certainly a worthy collection you've got two Omegas you've got the Hamilton and you've got the Benris the the Omegas um, they, they've got a fair bit of scope there I quite I must say I, I do I do enjoy uh, a quality Amiga. I, I think you could. Um, I, I I really think that type of collection there would be enhanced with a Speedmaster, like a seventies Speedmaster or a um, a Speedmaster Mark II. You know, with the eight six one movement, that would be really cool to add in there. It would bring the sizing. I I kind of you know I I don't I find that size a little small for myself. I'm really starting to like the bigger watches but um that's not to say there's anything wrong with the um those pieces you've chosen there i think they're all very cool and uh you know it, it, it's it's watch collecting you got to make you got to buy what you like um and and, the, and the, those are very two two amigas are very very good stable the hamilton the military issue hey can't go wrong with that and uh, the Benris there, yes, yes, it's, 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 they are not my cup of tea, they are not my cup of tea, but I, I, I can't criticize, I can't say no, I hate it, I hate it, I, I really do like to have a look at what you have in the collection, and uh, it, it gives meaning, it gives meaning, you've got to buy things that mean a lot, the 50s and 60s was an interesting period for watchmaking, uh, we didn't have the quartz interference. We, um, you know, men could be men in this era here. And uh, this is very much um, mad men sort of era there. This is where these, these, these were, were watches that had to perform a task. They weren't just a fashion accessory. This is where people needed to, to tell the time. They needed to get to a job. They needed to do work. So... Um, I, I I must say I quite like them. I I would still say I would like to see some bigger sports. You know, like I reckon you could squeeze an Amiga Speedmaster in there. I think a uh, maybe a 36 mil Datejust. You know, a 1601. That would be very nice to broaden the range and to to bring in um, some some sort of Rolex blood. You know, because at the end of the day, there you've got to. Uh, I think it's nice to 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 have a a balanced collection. So I'd I'd say uh, you've got a good base, and um, I reckon there's some great pieces. That, that's it's an interesting era. It's, it is a really interesting era, the 50s and 60s. This is this is when watches were more than just a fashion accessory. They were put to daily use, daily use. So. Uh, I think it's a it is an interesting time period there 40s and 40s you know World War Two a lot a lot of constraints there 50s and 60s the American glory days really so um, what do I think I like it I like the collection I really do like it is it my cup of tea probably not but I I can really see that as a nice base it's a nice base I would be adding some sports sports models particularly the Amiga I, I reckon you've got some some really good base you could add to that and uh, it'll just enhance the collection a bit there so 
What do I think? I like it. I really do like it. I really like it. So uh, there you go. Archie Luxury doing a paid review for Eric. The Omega. That's the nice 50s and 60s. What do I think? I like it. I like it. It's very interesting to see. So uh, guys, thank you so much. Eric, I'm Archie Luxury. This is the Paul Pruder Channel. Tell me what you guys think of that. Hi guys, Archie Luxury. Archie Luxury Channel, Paul Pluto Channel. And my good friend, Tan Zillin. Tan Zillin. Answering super chats. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. I feel like I'm doing my passion. Tan Zillin. Simply the best. And uh, he's got another one for you here. How's this? Uh, it's uh, not about the money. It's not about the money. It's uh, my passion. Shitling on time. Simply the best. Now, guys, I got to tell you, I struggle to survive full time on YouTube. Please look in the description below for 10 ways you can keep me full time on YouTube. Guys, I really need your help. Please consider getting a paid, paid video review. I'll do a review on any watch, any question you want. Guys, you can sponsor me on Patreon. You can sponsor me for as little as a dollar a month. A dollar a month, and that just keeps me going on full time on YouTube. Guys, you could also, I do phone calls. Phone calls, you can talk to me for an hour on the phone, Skype or WhatsApp, for 50 US dollars. Guys, I really do need your help to stay full time. Ben cannot survive on Google Ads alone. Please help me. Please help me stay full time on YouTube. And guys, don't forget that it's not about the money. It's uh, my passion. Shakling on time. Simply the best. Tanzillin, thank you. That's a sponsored bit from Tanzillin. I can do that for $150 a month if you email me directly. Look below for my email address, guys.